Okay, so um, we have the, this bounded area, which is trapped by the function f of x is equal to e to the 2x, and then the line x equals 1. And so for part A, you want to write the equation for a line that's tangent to the graph of f at the line x equals 1. So essentially, like, we're trying to find like the equation for a line that looks like this. Tangent, remember, basically um, just touches the, the function at one point. So we want to find the equation of this line. We first have to find the slope. And so the slope of a line that's tangent at that point will be the derivative of f of x evaluated at x equals 1. So f prime of x be equal to 2e to the 2x. So our tangent line will have a slope of 2e to the 2x. So we can write y equals mx plus b. And so now we can solve for the y-intercept by substituting 1 and e squared for x and y. So essentially you have e squared equals 2e squared plus b. And then so b is basically just negative 1e squared. Or just negative e squared. And so our equation for the tangent line is y is equal to 2e to the 2x times x minus e squared. All right, now in part b, or that's not part B. Part B, we're going to find the area of R. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that on this same side so you can see the graph as we're calculating it. So we want to find the area of R. Just going to show all of this. So we just want to basically integrate from 0 to 1. We want to integrate the function f of x from 0 to 1. So the area will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the 2x dx. So the antiderivative of e to the 2x, instead of multiplying by 2, you're going to divide by 2. So it's going to be e to the 2x over 2. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1. That will be e to the 2 times 1, or e to the 2 over 2, minus e to the 0 over 2. And number e to the 0 is just 1. Any number to the 0 power is 1. So this is just e squared over 2 minus 1 half. Or you can say e squared minus 1 over 2. And this is a non-calculator problem, so you really can't get any more specific answer. All right, now part C. We're going to essentially set up an expression that shows the volume of a solid whose bases are perpendicular to the y-axis, and so they create squares. So region R forms the base of a solid whose cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis, they're squares. So we just have to set it up. I'm not going to actually calculate it, but that's usually the hard part. So let's get let's get a sense of what we're trying to find. So um, we're trying to um, interpret this area or the surface as the base of a you know three dimensional object. So let's 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 actually like draw draw. Let me try to draw. Um, this could look like three dimensions. That'll be x, y, and this will be our z's popping up. It'll be like coming out of the page. And um, it's, so let's first focus just on um, this, what, what 
this would look like. So these are cross sections. If they're cross sections perpendicular to the y axis. That means they're going to run from left to right like that. So those horizontal lines will be the cross sections. So this, this is technically well, it's supposed to be a, a square, but it's not drawn to scale. Anyways, if I was to draw that, you know, on here. You know, it would be that sort of thing. That would be the, that would be that this base. Um, if it was to create a three-dimensional solid where the cross sections are, you know, squares, you're essentially making this cube object. So try our best to draw it. Here we go. So you generate this. Generate this cube, you know, with a base of or um, a side length of one, and you know, another side length. Both these are one. Now the volume of this is just simple. It's just going to be one cube or just one. But now we have to look at the the rest of the graph. So let's let's extend this out. So it's I'm going to, again do my best to, to draw this reasonably three dimensions. But let's look at what this um what this green area would be, what the rest of this would be. Trace it in green. So if three dimensions, it would, you know, kind of look like this. It would extend out, that would be this side, and it would tail off like that. Now, this is going to, you know, again, generate a, um, three-dimensional solid, but it's basically shrinking. It's, it's like a, it's a shrinking like cube sort of thing. I don't know how to, I don't know what it'd be called, but um, it would first start off, you know, at, you know, with this face, but let's say I went to go like, let's say I go a little far, let's say I have a line like, let's say over here. That's what this looks like on the plane. On here, that, remember, that's the base of a square. So the three-dimensional square would look like this, sort of. That's supposed to be a square. Pop out like that. And if I kept on going, let's say I did another one over here. Again, that's a side square. It would be something like this. And you know, it would keep on. It would just keep on doing that sort of thing. So it's just like a just sort of like kind of a cone. So it's a weird looking like shrinking cube square thing. Anyways, so we want to find um, how we can represent this volume as an integral. So this first part, the first you know, this first purple cube. That part's simple. It's just going to be the integral from zero to one. And you can just write one, essentially. Now I'm not going to write dx because we're actually not going to integrate with respect to x. We're going to integrate with respect to y. So technically, since it's a cube, it doesn't matter. It's just going from zero to one in either direction. But we're going to have this plus the integral that represents the rest of this volume. So if we're going to integrate with respect to y, we have to um, have a equation for this line, so a function of y, and then this line here. So um, let's extend that a little farther. 
So we're going to integrate from the rest of this. We'll, we'll go from one to to e squared in terms of y, and to get this um to get this area. We're gonna have to be a little creative with how we can um, make the equation of a square. Okay, first, um, let's change f of x to be a function of y. So, you know, if we have like essentially y being equal to e to two x, we would take the natural log of each side, and we would get natural log of y to so the natural log of e to the two x. You know, that essentially just take, cancels itself out. So the natural log of y equals 2x. Divided by 2. And then so then we have that x equals the natural log of y over 2. So that's going to be the the equation of this graph, this curved line. The equation of this graph would just be y equals 1. Oh no, I'm sorry, it would be just be x equals 1 or just 1. It's, it's just a horizontal line or a vertical line in terms of x. Now, um, this, this solid is being generated with cross sections that are squares. So we want to essentially find the area of each of these squares in terms of y. So we want to find like the side length. So remember, the, this is a side length. This is a side length of a square. So let me put it over here. So that this is the side length of a square. And obviously it's gonna, you know, it's gonna vary. It's gonna you know, be be larger here than it is here, and so forth. But um, if we remember, you know, when we're finding, you know, the area between two functions, if we want to find the length of this line segment, you would take the the equation of this function or this line here, and subtract the equation of this line. So you remember this. This line minus this function, or this function minus this function, will give you this line. So this this line is just an equation of one. So it'd just be one minus this function, and that function we found to be the natural log of y over two. So one minus the natural log of y over two. That would be the side length of the squares that would be generated. Each square has a side length of one minus the natural log of y over two. Um, keep, think of it like when you have think of it as when you first were, was for finding areas between two curves. You had maybe like maybe one function was called like g, another one was called f. So you had g minus you had the top one g minus f. That's what you're doing here. You're doing g minus f. We're doing a number in terms of in terms of y. Function for g of x is equal to one, and the function for f, or sorry, no, the function for g of y is equal to one, and the function for f of y is equal to natural log of y over two. Now this is this is the side length. So the area of a square would just be this squared. So that would just be our expression one minus the natural log y over 2 and we integrate with respect to y. These ones do take some time to, to understand, so really make sure you practice a lot of them.